Hey guys, welcome back. So with continuing our talks on the new Miguel O'Hara Spider-Man 2099 series, we're given a clearer picture of what this new reality is taking from the ones that it's absorbed by way of the return of one of Marvel's oldest anti-heroes, who brings along with him the remnants of modern day heroes who have died long before Miguel's time. So let's get into it. But first, if you're enjoying these videos, make sure to drop a like, subscribe if you're new to the channel, and don't forget to hit that bell up top to get all notifications so we can squat up in the comments for the first hour. All right, so coming back, we jump into what kind of feels like the next episode. Since each of the issues within this new Miguel O'Hara series are written like their own standalone stories, which is good for new readers, but also it's a nice way to flesh out the world building of this new universe, Earth 2099. But nonetheless, when we come back, we see Miguel following this guy by the name of Wynn Downs, who's said to be a rising star amongst the Gene Guard. And when it comes to the Gene Guard, these guys have been around since your original 2099 universe, Earth 928. And the best way to describe them would have to be straight out of Punisher 2099 issue one, where they're described as radical purity weirdos. They hate degens, inhumans, mutants, and really anyone who's not your run of the mill homo sapien. And just as an example, back in Punisher 2099 issue one, we're shown a member of the Gene Guard burning down a building full of degens who all ended up dying in this fire since they weren't intelligent enough to escape. So Punisher 2099 ran up on this guy, busted him upside the head with a pipe, dragged him to a bank point, which is pretty much like your ATM in the year 2099. And the Punisher made this guy donate all of his assets to the degen help fund organization. And right after that, the Punisher killed him. So yeah, that's just a little bit of a backstory to give you guys an idea of who this Wind Downs guy is, with him also being a Gene Guard purist. But right now, Miguel follows this guy to what seems like a retro hotel, but after Lila scans the place, they find out that it's actually a thrill kill club called the Body Shop that's made for people like members of the Gene Guard so they can have a place to go when they wanna just kill for the thrill. But after Wynn goes inside, a blast door shuts behind him, forcing Miguel to use his other senses to find another way inside. Meanwhile, when we follow Mr. Downs into the body shop, come to find out he's very disappointed because this place doesn't match the description on the website. Because online, they said there was gonna be a ton of DGENs in here, tied up, and ready to go. Which right there tells us a lot about Mr. Wynn Downs, just purely off of the fact that he's on the web looking for stuff like this. But we're shown early on that this body shop is actually a honey trap that was set by a creature who goes by the name of Terror who originally appeared in your old St. George comics from the late 80s to then later appear in the Marvel series Terror Inc. in 1992. And much like how we talked about this new Earth 2099 being an amalgamation of a number of different universes, it's pretty much the same deal with Terror, with him coming from Earth 88194, though he has made a number of appearances on Earth 616. But as far as the backstory for who and what this guy is, it's given to us here in the form of a flashback, which takes us way back into prehistory, when he was just a man who at the time slayed a demon bear to protect his village. And after slaying this bear, the curse, air quotes, came off of the bear and bonded with him, turning him into the creature he is now, who would later go by the name Terror and who the Germans would eventually call Shrek. But because of this curse, it would constantly keep his body in a state of decay. But it also gave him the ability to use the limbs of others as his own in order to sustain himself over countless years. And to answer the question of whether he's a good guy or a bad guy, Terror is really right in the middle, which nine times out of 10 places him in the role of an anti-hero. But every now and then, depending on the story, he'll just come off as the bad guy. And on top of that, since we're just tying every single video to Deadpool, and I mean, at least for the last few videos, I also want to mention at one point he was hired by Deadpool to be a part of Mercs for Money, but that whole thing eventually fell apart because Deadpool never paid anybody on time. But nonetheless, with us seeing Terror who set up this honey trap to lure in these not so bright murderers just to tear them to pieces, we also find out that at this point in the future, he's collected a number of limbs and organs from a ton of different heroes. And I mean, most of this he stole from Alchemax. But whenever he uses these limbs or organs, he also inherits the abilities of the person they came from. And it isn't long before we're given an example of how exactly that works in relation to the items that he's collected over the recent years. Because when we go back to Wynn Downs, who right now is just tearing his way through the body shop, 
hoping to find the helpless victims he was promised. Out of nowhere, all the lights just cut off on him, only for Wynn to find Terror standing right behind him. And one of the first things that Terror tells him is that the body shop is not your kill club, it's mine. And he just tears this dude's arm off as he goes on to tell him that luring him out here was like drawing a moth to a flame. And when a moth gets too close to the flame, it's burned as he just pushes this guy on the stove because apparently the rest of his body was just garbage. But just after this happens, Miguel O'Hara makes his way inside. So as a good host, Terror introduces himself, but right away Miguel tells him that the body shop is done and he demands that Terror hands over Wynn Downs. So Terror is just like, okay, well, which part of him? So Miguel then says, shock me. And it's right here where Terror gives Miguel a seismic kick by way of using the inhuman Gorgon's hoof, which really right here is the beginning of Terror telling Miguel his story of how he once was a man who killed the demon bear to protect his village and how from that moment when he underwent this transformation, which was ages ago, he's seen and been so much from a berserker to a knight to an assassin to where now he's an ambush predator. And it's really one of those things where if you think about it, with his specific curse that forces him to have to take the limbs of others before he completely deteriorates, it makes sense how over the years, Terror has made these changes as far as who he decided to be and what he needed to do to survive based on the era or specific state of the world at any particular time. Because after thousands upon thousands of however many years, it makes sense that over time he would create a new justification as far as who he would fight for and who he would fight against as the world continues to change over and over. And to be honest, I think his story would make for some really good television. Let me know what you guys think down in the comments. But either way, during this fight, Miguel ends up pulling one of Terror's eyes out since, you know, he recently discovered that this guy he's fighting is fully modular, only for Terror to follow up with the kick from his other leg that used to belong to Laura Kinney, which like we saw earlier was just another body piece on his collection. Because in 2099, Terror is just putting anybody on his body. And out of nowhere, we end up finding out that Terror has the tongue of Nathaniel Carver, hindsight, who was a mutant that had the ability to see others' memories upon contact, which is what allows Terror to find out that Spider-Man is Miguel O'Hara. So now with him knowing Miguel's background and his origin, Terror calls Miguel a genetic mishap, who's striving and aspiring to do and be better. And he tells Miguel, you mistake me for someone who wishes the same. Because again, for Terror, he started out noble, protecting his village, killing the demon bear. But after the thousands of years that followed, he's been more about survival and later justifying the means of how to do so. And because of the discrepancy of age, he tells Miguel that he's seeing things like a child or better yet an infant with his optimism. And in return, Miguel tells him that Terror is just hiding in here. Because if he really wants to target only bad people, he'd do it out there on the street and of course do so without means of corporal punishment. But for a moment here, Miguel gets the upper hand when he pulls out the wall from behind Terror, knocking him in the head with it. But this victory isn't long lived because just after this happens, Terror calls for Stormbreaker, which yeah, Miguel wasn't ready for that. But the way that Terror was able to do this, he explains it's because he's using the Corbinite heart of Beta Ray Bill, which lucky enough makes him worthy. So Miguel thinks fast and he dodges the thunder that follows, only to then hitch a ride on Stormbreaker just so that he can come back around and kick Terror just before he can catch it, which then causes Stormbreaker to go through his chest, knocking Beta Ray Bill's Corbinite heart right out of Terror's back, which come on man, you can't tell me Miguel ain't got the moves. But this whole fiasco with Stormbreaker flying around and breaking through this building, which already wasn't in good shape to start with, this causes Stormbreaker to drop down along with the rest of this building on top of both Terror and Miguel, which for a moment here gives us a recreation of the iconic Peter Parker Spider-Man lifting moment that we got in Amazing Spider-Man Volume 1 Issue 33, but this time around with it being Miguel O'Hara and not Peter Parker, rather than us getting the motivational speech that we got from Peter where he saw visions of Aunt May and Uncle Ben. Here, we just see Miguel tell Lila to order him some pain meds, the good stuff. Cause who needs motivation when you got, you know what, I'm gonna stop myself right there. <laughs> whoa, whoa, pump the brakes. But after climbing out of this rubble, Miguel finds Wynn's body, which is extra crispy with a heart missing, which right there just lets him know that Terror got away, likely in the sewers. But Miguel doesn't go after him. And instead he tells Lila, if Terror is stupid enough to show his face in town again, I'll bury him twice as deep beneath it. And you know what? I believe him. 
and right after this we see terror has made his escape by retreating through the sewers but also he's taken miguel's words into consideration because earlier when miguel said that terror is actually hiding instead of going for the bad guys on the streets well terror's now taking that to heart no pun intended so going forward he's switching up his justification again to where now he's hunting the predators who are lurking in the dark which from here takes us over to a bar where a ton of the members from the gene guard are pretty much using this place as their hideout slash base of operations and this is a place that Terra was able to find since he had taken the body parts of Wind Downed who was supposed to meet his other gene guard buddies here around this time which now just gives Terra a number of body parts to pick from in order to pull himself back together after that crazy fight with Miguel and in the bigger picture, much like the other stories that we've talked about in this Miguel O'Hara Spider-Man 2099 series, this story just adds another brushstroke to the canvas that'll soon define what this new Earth 2099 will be. And so now real quick, I want to give a special shout out to all the patrons. Thank you guys for all of your support. And for anyone who's new here who wants more information on how to support the channel, I got a link below where you can go to patreon.com slash dope spill but that'll do it for this one guys let me know your thoughts down in the comments below and we'll do it again on the next one all right later